Okay, welcome back to one more part three of Elasticity Lecture B, because I really think it's important that you get some experience looking at real elasticities and practicing interpreting what they mean and what they tell us about the world. And so here are some uh, real world elasticities about alcoholic products. And so looking first at beer, um, I guess what I would recommend if, to make sure you understand it, pause the video now and see if you can explain what these price elasticities of demand mean and what these income elasticities mean, income elasticity of demand, and what these cross price elasticities mean. And then I'll go through them. Okay, so price elasticity of demand for beer is inelastic because the absolute value is less than one. Uh, wine, sorry, liquor is unit elastic or unitary elastic and uh, wine is elastic for price elasticity of demand. And for beer, this elasticity means that the response in quantity is going to be half as large as the change in price, percent change in price. So for example, for a 10% increase in price, uh, half as much would be the response for beer, 5% decrease in quantity demanded. But for liquor, a 10% increase in price would lead to the same 10% decrease in quantity demanded. But for wine, a 10% increase in price would lead to a 20%, twice as much, uh, decrease in quantity demanded, very elastic, well, or moderately elastic. Um, it's a pretty big response. Now for income elasticity, these are all positive, so we know that uh, beer, liquor, and wine are all normal goods, but uh, beer is much less elastic than liquor, which is less elastic than wine when it comes to income response. Remember, we're talking about responsiveness here. And so, for example, for a 10% increase in income, we would see people 0.43 times 10, a 4.3% increase in the amount purchased. So 10% increase in income, a smaller 4.3%, because 4.3 divided by 10 equals 0.43, uh, increase in quantity. Income elasticity of demand for liquor, a 10% increase in liquor in the in the sorry in income, that would be the cause, will cause an about an 8% increase in the quantity purchased. So 8 divided by 10 would give us this 0.8. And for uh, wine, each 10% increase in income will cause a 12% increase in the quantity of wine purchased due to its increase in demand. So we'd call this elastic since it's bigger than one or income elastic and this is income inelastic because the both of these two uh, for beer and liquor are less than one. Now when it comes to a cross price elasticity I don't know that I've ever seen a cross price elasticity that was bigger than one in absolute value. Um, I'll have to go back and, and look, but I haven't, I don't recall seeing one. I guess the largest one I've ever seen for a cross price elasticity is, is one that was approximately one. Now for all of these products are similar and so they are all substitutes, they're all alcoholic beverages. And that's why all these elasticities are positive. And again, remember that uh, the way uh, we write a cross price elasticity, this, this can be difficult to remember, but we're talking about how does the quantity of the first product um, respond to a change in price of the second product. So I'll call those product two, product one. So I'm just listing these in order of the way that they're commonly named. So again, if the price of liquor changes, how does the quantity of beer respond, for example? If the price of wine changes, how does the quantity of beer respond? If the price of liquor changes, how does the quantity of wine respond? And here we just switch those two. If the price of wine changes, how does the quantity of liquor respond? And you get two different elasticities depending on which is the cause and which is the effect here. And so for these cross price elasticities, 
let's interpret what these would mean. Now, the 0.08 means that there's not a big response in the quantity of beer when the price of liquor changes, right? So, for example, if there were a 10% change in the price of liquor, then that's going to be on the bottom of the fraction uh, for elasticity. The quantity is going to be on top. So um, what divided by 10% would give us 0 0.08? Well, that would be 0 0.8, right? Percent change in the quantity of beer. Whoops. Quantity of beer, right? So for a decent sized change in the price of liquor, there would be a very small change in the uh, percent change in the quantity of beer, which tells us this is so small, close to zero, that liquor and beer are not really very close substitutes at all. Now think about if two, two products were totally unrelated, then the cross price elasticity would be zero because the price of one good would change and the uh, quantity of the other one wouldn't respond at all. So this 0.08 is telling us this is close enough to zero to where liquor and beer, even though you think that they should be pretty close substitutes, they're not. Similarly with beer and wine. When the price of wine goes up, there's not a big response in the quantity of beer. So this tells me that people who drink liquor, when the price of liquor goes up, they don't look to beer as being a substitute. Similarly, when the price of wine goes up, people don't, those people don't look, who, who normally would buy wine, they don't look to beer as being a close substitute because this is even smaller, 0.05. Um, very small reaction in the quantity of beer. But let's look at wine and liquor. This is very interesting that when the price of liquor goes up, for each 1% change in the price of liquor, there will be a 0.6% increase in the uh, quantity of wine. So that's assuming it's an increase in the price of liquor. Think about a 10% increase in the price of liquor. What divided by 10? Well, 6% change in the quantity of wine. So wine and liquor are much closer substitutes because when the price of liquor goes up, there's a fairly large response. We wouldn't call it elastic, but, but a decent sized response in the quantity of wine people buy. And when we reverse it and we see what happens when we raise the price of wine, what happens to the quantity of liquor that is purchased, a little bit closer relationship there, a little bit more responsive relationship there. For each 10, if we saw, for example, a 10% increase in the price of wine, we would see a 7% shift increase in the quantity of liquor and so wine and liquor are fairly close substitutes whereas beer and liquor and beer and wine uh, don't have that kind of close relationship so hopefully now if you see an elasticity you'll know what does that tell us and be able to interpret it